Welcome to the Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar series. During today's webinar, you're able to ask questions of our panelists. The questions, as well as the webinar recording, will be posted to our YouTube channel a week from today's broadcast date. And today's topic is getting started with asset discovery and rolling out the BCM agent. I'll turn it over to Segar to take us through this content. Thank you very much, Greg, for the introduction. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining this webinar. My name is Sagar Mamane and I'm the Staff Specialist Technical Support Analyst working with BMC Client Management Product. Let's uh, get started with today's webinar. This will be our agenda for today's webinar. We will be first seeing the overview of what the BMC Client Management Product is all about and we are going to uh, discuss the asset discovery and the rollout. There are certain troubleshooting parts uh, that we will be reviewing and at the end I'll be giving you some references. So just to give you an overview of what the BMC client management product is all about. It is an automated endpoint management solution that helps you in discovery, inventory, it helps you in managing all the devices in your environment and when I say device management, it helps you manage the Windows, Mac, Linux, different kind of devices. Uh, the OS deployment, application deployment is another very powerful features of the client management application. Software license management, compliance management, the patch management which not only helps you install the patches of the Windows or the patches that you get from Microsoft but the patches for the products such as Adobe Reader or let's say 7-Zip or there are several list of vendors which you could see in, in our product documentation page. A very important feature, the direct access tool, which helps you access the file system of the device, the services, you could remotely manage them, the registry events, and even you could take the remote control of the devices. There are several possible automations that can be achieved using the operational rule steps. And the last and the most important one, the BMC client management product is available for you to install on premise and it is available on SaaS as well, which we refer to as the Helix Client Management Solution. Out of all these components, today we are going to see the asset discovery and the rollout. That is the agenda of today's webinar. So let's get started with the asset discovery overview. Asset discovery is divided into different parts. Uh, the first one and the most important part is the scanner. Now, what is a scanner? The asset discovery scanner is any device in your network which is defined as the scanner that has the capability to scan the networks. Now this, this particular device will be responsible for the whole scanning process. And by default, when the BMC client management is installed, the master server becomes your first scanner. The second component is the scan itself, which will be configuring uh, the scan configuration wherein we'll be specifying different protocols to scan against, uh, such as SMB, Hyper-V, and WMI for Windows, the SSH for Linux, Unix, and the Mac devices, vSphere for the VMware ESXi, uh, SNMP for the network devices, such as routers, switches, or printers, and the target list, wherein the IP range can be specified, or the CIDR notation. So when we specify the CIDR notation, this will be broken down into the individual IP addresses and the scan will be initiated on those IP addresses. Or you could assign just the comma separated IP addresses. Just need to ensure that there is no space between the comma and the next IP address. So these are some of the important prerequisites for the asset discovery module to function properly. The module is loaded by default whenever there is a new scanner added into the client management and by default the master server is the first scanner and the asset discovery module is loaded onto the master server by default. It has to have the permanent internet connection and there are certain operating system requirements uh, that you could review uh, in the documentation that will be uh, shared with you in the end. These are some important ports which will be used. The ports which are specified here is for the Windows, Mac, Linux, and even for the network devices. 
Let's see uh, in a quick view about how the scan is performed and what all processes it goes through. Again, this is not in-depth process, but just an overview uh, for you to understand how the scan is executed. So first and most important thing is when the Nmap is enabled, the scan which will be performed is faster compared to uh, when it's disabled. So the first item is it will process the supplied host range and split into the members. So let's say you have provided an IP address range, then that range will be split into the individual IP addresses and the scanning process will start. Nmap will start scanning and it will start detecting the operating system. Now how Nmap does it? It does it based on the fingerprint probes. It is one of the mechanisms that Nmap uses. So Nmap will sort the discovered versus non-discovered assets. Once it sorts the list, the discovered versus non-discovered devices, it, it will then try to discover the reachable ports, the services, and it will start detecting the operating system objects. The credentials will be tested for each protocol, uh, such as SMB, SSH, or, or SNMP. When the credentials are tested successfully, the scan will continue with the respective protocols of those operating systems. So for Windows, it will use the SMB file shares. Software inventory will be co collected based on the SMB. And the hardware inventory will be collected based on the WMI database. Same goes for Linux. It will use the SSH against all the listening SSH services to collect all the required information and then upload it uh, once the scan is completed. Same goes with the SNMP. It will use something called as MIB and the OIDs to classify and explore the network enabled devices. So what is MIB? It's the management information base. It is a database used for managing the entities in a communication network. And OID is one of the parts of the MIB. And OID is known as object identifier. So for vSphere and Hyper-V, it will bypass the scripting engine and it will go to the dedicated module called as Virtual Infrastructure Manager, which is dedicatedly created for the virtual environment, such as vSphere and Hyper-V. What will happen when the Nmap is disabled? It is relatively slower because Nmap works faster in terms of detecting the operating system and performing the scan. So when Nmap is disabled, the IP range will be processed as usual. The scanner will try to find the reachable TCP and the UDP ports, the UDP answers will be trapped and the information will be updated on the scanner. It will try to discover the services from the target assets. The uh, operating system detection will be based on the outputs of the scripts that will be remotely executed on the target devices. If the credentials are updated, the scan continues. If the credentials are not updated in the scan configuration, the scan will stop right then and there. So if the credentials are found, it is again going to uh, execute the same process that we saw earlier on. On Windows devices, it's going to scan with the SMB protocol for Linux, Mac, Unix, it's going to use SSH and so on and so forth. Now, we'll be seeing the demo for Asset Discovery Scan. So for demo purpose, I'm going to perform a scan on few peculiar IP addresses. We're going to perform the same scan twice, but by making some changes to the scan configuration. As we saw in the earlier slides, there are different components for the asset discovery. The first and the important thing is the scanner. And as I mentioned, by default, the master server is the first scanner device and, and we could see it added here by default. So if you're relatively new to client management, I would recommend you to going through wizard and then configure the asset discovery scan. So we'll go to wizards and the asset discovery scan. We are going to configure the asset discovery scan. So I will select it configurable, click next. Now it will ask you for some configuration information. Uh, these are the things which we discussed earlier and the 
since we only have one scanner in our environment we will select the master as the uh, scanner device if you have any additional scanners you could select other scanner and then choose from the list of available scanners we'll be creating a new scan configuration and a new target list we are going to uncheck this otherwise it will start scanning the entire subnet that the master server is on and if we want to define a schedule we could define it from here uh, that will enable this ninth step or if we want to do it immediately we'll keep this enabled click next give your scan a meaningful name click next now we'll be enabling the scan configuration so first when we'll be performing this scan we are not going to specify any credentials we'll be specifying the credentials for the same scan when we run second time so i'm going to leave these enabled but not specify any credentials click next update the target list so here you could add an address range or the cidr notation or you could specify the ip addresses in the comma separated form Excluded members is when you want to exclude certain devices or certain endpoints from the scanning process. You could specify their IP addresses here. Click OK. And our scan is created. I'm going to click on finish and I'm going to activate the job with the following schedule, which will run right away. Click yes. So our scan is now created successfully and as you could see the components scan configuration is assigned the target list which we created is assigned and the schedule which we specified immediately and right away is also assigned so it is currently assigning the scan and it will start scanning the devices so our scan is now executing we will wait for a while so the asset discovery scan has broken down those IP addresses into the individual IPs so that it will perform the scan on the individual endpoints. The scan is now completed successfully. As you can see, it, is, it has only used the Nmap to scan these devices and it has detected the operating system uh, the closest that it could find or the closest it could detect. And as you can see, none of these protocols, though we have enabled it at the scan configuration level, are used in this scan. Because we have not specified the credentials, so the asset discovery module will not be able to perform the tests on these protocols. Now we are going to perform the same scan, but we are going to add the credentials for SSH and the SMB or the WMI for Windows. The credentials can be added from global settings credentials section if you want to add the SNMP credentials you could add it in the SNMP credentials section since we have Windows and the Linux devices we are going to specify the credentials under the account credentials section right click create account credentials I will say Windows if you have a domain name then do not specify the .com or .local just provide the name of the domain in my scenario, the devices are not domain joined, so I will just specify the credential. Click OK. In the same way, I'm going to add the credentials for Linux. Now, we are going to update these credentials in the scan configuration. So let's go to the asset discovery module configurations that we have created. So the protocols are already enabled and we are now going to add the credentials for Windows and for Linux. I'm going to disable these three protocols because the devices which we are scanning are the Windows and the Linux only for now. Click OK. So after making the changes to the scan configuration, the scan needs to be reassigned. So whenever you make any change to the scan configuration or to the target list, it must be reassigned. Otherwise, the changes are not reconsidered. So simply right click on the assigned schedule and click on reassign scan. We will now wait for this particular scan to get executed. The scan is now being executed.
So now as you can see the asset discovery module is trying to perform the scan based on SMB and WMI. Wherever it has the Linux devices, it will use SSH and wherever it has the Windows devices, it will use the SMB and the WMI protocol. So our asset discovery scan is completed successfully. Let's compare the result of the asset discovery scan with the previous asset discovery scan result, wherein we only had the Nmap scan and we did not have this scan by any other protocols. I have taken a quick snip of the previous scan so that we could compare the result. And by comparison, you can see the operating system name, which is detected by specifying the credentials versus the Nmap has huge difference in it. The operating system names are accurate when the scan is performed using the credentials. When the asset discovery is completed, could click on the discovered devices and just refresh the screen and you will see the devices that are discovered. We'll quickly see an example of how the inventory is collected. So if you expand the device, click on inventory, you will be able to see the hardware and the software inventory which is collected. So this concludes the asset discovery demo. Now that we have successfully discovered the devices, what next after the devices are discovered? The different functionalities of the client management that we saw in the overview section, that it does the application deployments, it does the patch deployments, it has you know great capabilities like direct access, remote control. Can all those be just accomplished after the devices are discovered? No, it can't be. For that, to work, you need to install a unique BCM agent on those devices. And that is something that can be done using the rollout mechanism. Now the client management has this mechanism through which you do not have to physically visit all those individual machines in your environment and carry the installation of the BCM agent, but he could directly do it using the client management console. It will remotely install the BCM agent on all those devices and those devices will start appearing in the client management console as the managed devices. Then you could start using the different modules of the client management application. There are different methods and again there are different components that the rollout has. The rollout server itself just like we had a dedicated asset discovery scanner in the same way we we have to have a dedicated rollout server as well and again by default the master server will be our default rollout server the rollout itself that we will be creating the user accounts they play very important and very vital role not only in the asset discovery but in the rollout as well the client management application needs the authorization and the authentication on these devices provided the credentials are valid and they have enough privileges to perform the installation remotely the client management will help you install the agents on these devices remotely the targets can be assigned in the form of devices or the device groups uh, groups can have multiple devices together you could have the devices that are discovered in a specific group and then assign it to the rollout or you could import it using csv and then you could create a group and then assign it to the rollout it is there are several uh, possibilities that can be done here the rollout can be installed using push or the pull method the push method is something that i just explained wherein you do not have to physically be present on all the devices to install the client management agent the client management console uh, will take care of all these things for you. The pull method is that you can manually download the executable that will be created as a part of the rollout and then it can be installed manually on the devices. You could either RDP or copy that ex executable file directly on the device and then perform the installation. And just like the asset discovery, there are certain prerequisites for the rollout to function properly. The rollout module must be loaded. And by default, when the client management application is installed, the rollout module is loaded by default on the master server. And that is your first rollout server. The win on the Windows devices, to be more specific, the Windows administrative shares must be enabled. The user account which will be used to perform the rollout must be able to access the administrative shares on the Windows devices.
specifically on the Linux and the Mac devices, the root account must be enabled and there are additional settings that need to be applied in order to perform the rollout using the push method. You will see the detailed information in the documents or the links that will be shared with you in the end. Now I will demo the rollout. So we have these devices discovered already with the asset discovery scan and we have some windows and some Linux devices on which we are going to perform the BCM agent installation. First we will create a rollout for the Windows devices and then we will create the rollout for the Linux devices. The rollout option is available under global settings and the rollouts node. If you are not familiar with the rollouts node and don't know how to create a new rollout, I will recommend you going through the wizard which will ensure that you, you do not miss on any of the important aspects or the important concepts that we discussed earlier in the rollout section. So let's go to wizards, click on agent rollout. Since we are going to install the BCM agent, we will keep the action to perform as install. In case you have a need wherein you need to create the reinstall or the uninstall type of rollout, then you could choose it from the drop down and then proceed with the wizard. These are some advanced sections which we are not going to focus more on. The only important point here or the important aspect that I need to focus on is the configure the relay selection or use the master otherwise. So by default, if we go with the wizard, the master server will be the default parent that will be assigned to the rollout. So whenever the agents are installed, all those agents will start communicating with the master server securely. In case you have a dedicated relay in your environment or you are in the process of configuring different relay selection mechanisms, then this option will be useful. In our demo, we are going to choose the master as the default parent, but just so that you know what all options are available, I'm going to keep this checkbox enabled, which will highlight the third section in this wizard, which is related to the communication. Click next, give a meaningful name to the rollout, rename the auto extractable name as well, just so that when it is downloaded, you know what it is used for. Enable the silent mode, since we are going to install it on the Windows devices, we'll choose the operating system as Windows All Architectures. The default installation directory, since this is the system variable that will be used in Windows, it will point to C program files. The default name of the service will be BMC Client Management Agent, and we are going to start this service after the rollout is installed. Click Next. So this is the section. So in our case, we have the static relay assigned, which is pointing to the master server. It has by default selected the master server as the default parent or the default relay. In case you need to configure the additional relay selection mechanism, let's say you, you can choose the static relay and then specify the parent name, which can be the master server or it can be a dedicated relay server followed by you could have a backup mechanism. So that way, when the agent cannot communicate with the primary or the static relay, it can switch to the backup relay. So you have a backup plan ready with you in case the primary relay is unreachable or if there are any issues in your environment. In the same way, there are relay list servers that could also be used, but the relay list needs to be created first, which will then assign the relays to the respective devices based on their subnets or based on their IP addresses. For now, we are going to stick with the static relay option. Click next. So with this option, you could assign a whole device group and then proceed with the rollout. Else you could use this particular option to individually assign the devices. Or if you have the semicolon separated IP addresses, then you could use the third option and then give a range or the uh, semicolon separated IP addresses in this section. We will first create the rollout and then I will show you how to assign the devices once the rollout is created. Add the credentials. We have the rollout created for Windows. So I will choose the Windows credentials that we had already created. Click OK. 
the verify rollout option will be highlighted when you at least have one device added into the device section or at least the group added. This will verify the basic prerequisites, whether the administrative shares are enabled and whether the device is accessible using these credentials. So we do not have the devices added and we are going to add the devices after the rollout is created. So we'll click on finish. Check this box, which will take us directly to the rollout when it is created. And we are going to activate the rollout, which will create the executable file. So our rollout is now successfully created. Let's assign the devices and start rolling out the agent. So using the assign groups tab, you could assign the whole device group as you could do it through the wizard and through targets. You could assign the individual IP addresses in the semicolon separate format, or you could assign the existing devices. As we already have the list of discovered devices with us and they are a part of the out of the box discovered devices group, we are going to choose the Windows devices from there and assign it to the rollout that we have created. Right click, add existing device. Let's browse to the same path out of the box discovered devices. We are going to select the Windows devices because we are going to perform it on the Windows devices only. So I'm only going to select three devices to install the BCM agent and I will show you how to manually install the BCM agent on one of these devices by pulling the BCM agent. Click OK. Once the devices are added, you could select all the devices and then click on start rollout or you could do it from the assign schedule option. Right click and start rollout. In case you have a need that you need to schedule the BCM agent rollout at a certain time and considering that you have a dynamic device group assigned to this particular rollout, then you could do it from the schedule tab. You have to right click and go to properties and define the schedule as per your requirement. Click OK. This will start rolling out the BCM agents on the groups or the list of targets which are assigned based on the schedule which you have configured. So in our case, we are going to perform it right away. Click start rollout, click yes. Now the BCM agent is being installed on these devices. We will wait for some time. The executable file will be copied to the individual devices and then the rollout will be performed. So we have the BCM agent installed on three devices successfully. If we now go into device topology, and refresh the screen. We have two devices successfully reported so far. And this is what I was referring to when I explained about the communication parameter. So if you had any other relay in between, then you could have this particular device communicate through the relay to the master. Okay, as I refresh, I see all those three devices successfully communicating with the master server. So these are the managed devices. When the BCM agent is installed, you could then perform more operations such as patch management or package distribution, or if you want to install a specific application. Right, so now let's create a rollout for Linux in the same way and install it on the Linux devices. So go to wizards, agent rollout, Keep it to install, click next. First change the operating system and change it to Linux. Choose the right operating system if it's 64-bit or 32-bit. Give a meaningful name to the rollout that we are creating. Even to the auto extractable file. This is the default location or the path where the BCM agent will be installed at and this will be the name of the service service will start after it's installed click next the options are pretty same that we already discussed we need to assign the credentials which we specifically added for the linux operating system click ok click finish let's go to rollout the rollout is now available let's go to targets right click add existing devices the same way we will go to the discover devices and select the Linux devices only. Click OK. The devices are now added. Let's select all and start rollout. There are some additional prerequisites that you need to fulfill in order to deploy the BCM agent on the Linux devices using the push method. The root account must be enabled and the root account must have 
permissions to perform the SSH on these devices. We'll be sharing some important links with you in the end, which will help you in finding and updating these prerequisites in your environment. So we have the BCM agent installed on all three devices successfully. We will just give it a minute or two and then we will refresh the console and you will see the devices have started communicating to the master server. Now let's move to the last part and we will be downloading the BCM agent executable file manually and then installing it on one of the Windows devices. So this is one of the Windows devices which we did not install the BCM agent using the push method and we are going to download the executable file and then going to perform the installation manually. So open the browser and in the address bar you need to type in https colon slash slash the name of the rollout server colon the port of the console or the agent port which is 1610 or 1611 slash rollout. We will be presented with the login screen. Let's log in. You need to use the same credentials that you use to log into the BMC client management console. Once you log in, all the rollouts that are created on this particular rollout server will be visible and it will be available for you to download and then perform the installation manually whenever you need. So we are going to download the executable file for Windows. Save when prompted. So whenever the executable file is downloaded, you need to run this installation with the administrative privileges. So let's right click and then click on run as administrator. The log file will be created along with it. So in case you have any failures in installing the BCM agent, you could share the same log file with the BMC support on the case that you will be creating. The BCM agent is now successfully installed. You will see this shield icon in the system tray. By default, the icon will be gray when it's initializing and it will turn blue when the BCM agent is successfully initialized. So this concludes the rollout demo. We have successfully installed the BCM agent on the Windows and the Linux devices using push and the pull method. The product documentation has the troubleshooting guide which can be referred to in case you encounter any issues. The information which is updated there is based on the commonly raised support cases. We are also going to discuss some of the common issues that the customers encounter. So in case you encounter those issues, you will be able to fix it then and there. While performing the asset discovery scans, there are certain issues that have been encountered by our customers and we have made a list of some of the very common issues. Uh, Let's see this particular problem. Uh, the target IP shows unreachable uh, when we enable the Nmap and when it's disabled, the scan works successfully. So this issue usually happens when the Nmap is not installed or it's not detected during the installation or the Nmap files are corrupted. The solution for this particular issue is pretty simple. You need to verify if the Nmap is installed. You could do it from add or remove programs. Uh, or you could also go to the master installation directory or the client in case the scanner is a different device from the master server. And then you could go to bin and the nmap directory. You will see the binaries and the DLL files which are being used by nmap. And if the above two conditions are satisfied and the issue still persists, then you need to execute the nmap or you need to reinstall the nmap on the scanner device. So the uh, nmap package is already created. You need to go to operational rules and you will find the nmap.cst operational rule. You need to expand it and assign the scanner device there. It will start installing the nmap and once the nmap is installed successfully, reassign the scan and you will not see this particular issue again. A very common scenario or a very common issue that we see that the scan device uh, operating system name is incorrect. It either shows Windows Longhorn or Windows XP instead of the Windows 10. The cause of this issue is pretty straightforward. When the scan is being executed, the scan has actually failed on the SMB or the WMI protocol. It could be due to incorrect credentials or certain restrictions or the prerequisites are not met. 
So you need to re-enter the credentials in the scan and then reassign the scan. If that doesn't fix the issue, then you need to verify the SMB and the WMI connections using these options. Now these are some of the common issues which we see during the rollout installation. The rollout installation fails with the maintenance operation found message uh, which will appear right on the console. The cause of this issue is the previous BCM agent installation or the upgrade process was not completed properly and as a result of this incomplete installation or the upgrade operation there are two different services created and running on the target devices. So when you open the services MMC, you will see two different services. You need to stop uh, both the services and then delete one of the services that ends with setup or that has BMC client management setup as the name. And then you need to rerun the rollout. Another rollout issue is rollout fails with exit code 94. The cause is that the BCM agent rollout process timed out as it exceeded the five minutes threshold. Now it doesn't matter if you're pushing the rollout or you're installing it manually using the pull method. There is a default five minutes threshold or the timeout period which is specified. And if rollout takes more than five minutes to install, it will fail with exit code 94. Uh, the solution or the workaround for this particular issue is you need to monitor the activities on that particular device and make sure that the enough compute resources are being allocated to the BCM agent setup. Most of the times the antivirus scan can cause the issue or it can cause the delay because it scans each and every binary which delays the installation process. The last and the most important thing is when you open a support case with BMC support to work on the asset discovery issues, then these are some of the important locations where the log files and the configuration files are stored at. It will be really helpful if you zip these individual folders and upload them on the ticket. That way, the support TSA who is working on the ticket will be able to analyze the log files for you and give you the solution on time. If you encounter any issues with the rollout, then you need to right click on the target device which is assigned to the rollout and then click on display log. This is all visible on the console directly. You need to copy those logs in a notepad and then upload it on the ticket if it is a rollout issue. These are some helpful links which will be useful for you while working with the asset discovery in client management. These are some of the references which you could keep handy with you. There are some more which will be shared with you on the BMC communities page. In summary, we saw what are the prerequisites to run the asset discovery scan, what are the different protocols which are used such as SMB, WMI, SSH and the SNMP. We also saw the different methods that are used for performing the rollout. We pushed the rollout from the console and then we downloaded the rollout manually using the pull method and then we installed it on one of the Windows servers. So that concludes today's webinar. Back to you, Greg. Thank you, Sagar. And now I'll take us through the self-help and contacting BMC, the YouTube channel where this webinar will be posted, along with a rich set of how-to videos is available. The Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar schedule is available at this community's link. It has future webinars as well as our past webinars and recordings. And also the hot off the press newsletter that contains a lot of trending information for all the DSOM products. To contact technical support via web phone email as well as these social channels are listed here. And at this time that will conclude this webinar. Thank you.